Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Again, always in Vegas for all the great Cube action, Silicon Angle, and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co host. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Dylan Larson is here. He's the director of Xeon Platform Marketing for Intel. Welcome. Thanks. It's good to be here. Good to see you, Dylan. So, we have been having a big discussion today about metadata and Flash and you know, it's just starting to, to morph this whole thing together. What are you guys seeing in that regard? You know, it's exactly that. I think what we're seeing is more and more the storage platforms are going to do more computation, right? So whether it's, it's not, it's no longer just sort of placing data on disks. It's all about analytics. It's about doing much more um, deeper, more efficient provisioning of, of the capability. And I think we're just seeing putting the CPU to work in ways that you know, we hadn't seen before. So analytics coming to storage platforms is good news for you because we're going to need Absolutely. more juice, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Analytics is, is a big deal. It's like you can't, I was saying that I, you couldn't do a presentation um, you know, anywhere in the industry without talking about cloud about six months ago. Now you can't do one without talking about analytics or Hadoop or different technologies that are basically putting the data to work. Uh, here it so Intel, I said Intel marches to the cadence of Moore's Law. Mm -hmm. And now there's those who say that Moore's Law is dead. Is Moore's Law dead? No, not by a long shot. <laughs> so you know, so why do they say that? Why do people say Moore's Law is I dead? I mean, because processors still doubling in performance every 18 yeah, months, right? I think I mean, because the problems are hard, right? I mean, I think if you're going to continue to drive this relentless cadence to drive the geometries of the transistors down smaller and smaller, you get these things where, you know, you do run into the limits of physics, but we are, we're not there. We're, we are on that cadence and we, you know, march to a cadence across pretty much everything we do. We sort of hit this sort of very regular predictable beat rate. And it helps make the products better. It helps us get to the products to the market on time, put more slot Beginning of that journey. Now you're at, you know, zillions of cores soon. What has changed in the business from your perspective, you know, looking at all aspects, whether it's cryptography on the fly to say something um, as trivial as doing a real-time analytical query that would have taken a pre pre-processing, sure. query run, send it out to the data warehouse, yeah. get it back in six weeks later. No, you're exactly right. So, I, so I think, I mean, a couple things. The Moore's Law we talked about is, has been kind of that fundamental enabler. We can put more and more transistors in the same die area by just following Moore's Law. So we can put more, pack more and more capability in smaller spaces. And then you add, so what are you going to do with that space? You can do specialized acceleration to do cryptography, like you said, crypto on the fly. You can add more cores to the product. But it has absolutely done what you, what you said. It's given us the ability to get to very real-time analytic type of processing. It's given the ability to take a whole new class of, of performance to you know, everybody. Right? And, I, and I, as I, we watch our products, you know, customers are choosing to buy high core counts. They're choosing to buy high performance because it matters, especially for these new analytics. What have you seen? I, I just want to, on a personal level, yeah. you know, put Intel aside sure, for sure. a minute. You've seen, you know, you're close to a lot of action and you're on roadmaps with the, with the, with the processors that are out a couple of years. What are you seeing right now in today's business that is just blows your mind? I mean, I mean, just in that question yeah. we just had, crypto on the fly, and this is stuff that was unheard of a decade ago. Mm -hmm. So you've got a new generation of people coming into the enterprise, yeah. coding, computer science, doubly, e, all this great stuff. You guys are still building more friends. What are you seeing right now that blows your mind in terms of the tech I think the and thing, the science? A couple of things that, that kind of blow my mind is Putting, then this is going to be back to the analytics thing. It sounds like party line, but it's not. I mean, putting the, that much information to work is just amazing to me. I mean, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, basically indexing the entire internet, you know, with Google style, you talk about taking all this data and finding out some of these esoteric trends that people are doing um, online with, with your services and being able to, like, basically build correlations between what's happening. I think the whole machine learning idea of, kind of classifying behavior and then putting it to work is really, really interesting. It does, yeah, it does we, oh, we, we love that too. I think machine learning is so early in, yeah. in this development. And you know, there was a, you know, back to the AI theory days was the learning sure. machine, right? Sure, sure. And you know, Watson's a great example for it with IBM. Yeah. I mean, that, that should morph, mm -hmm. should morph pretty well. I, I think so. I, I think that, and I think that there's an appetite for that. When you talk to end customers, CIOs, and, and uh, big you know, data architecture guys, you, you do get this view of saying, how do I put this data to work in new ways? And they want to be able to do it with you know, some level of autonomy because you can't manage all so, that stuff. So the couple so, things that are also going on that's interesting is obviously augmented reality mm -hmm. has brought a whole nother kind of first person gamer perspective sure. to things like Google Glass. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's good, good for the headlines, but still it's early, it's unbaked, it's still, unlike the iPhone, you know, we had a conversation last night, I was at a party at Palo Alto and um, you know, 
it was like talking about the iPhone. I was in the debate. I said, hey, the iPhone was pretty well formed. People knew how to make phone sure. calls and do text messages, and yet an app economy in the in the iTunes and the App Store, even Gen 1 was still good up. People sure. could get that paradigm. Google Glass is still early. Right? Oh, yeah. What the hell is that? But still, for a Gen 1, it's pretty good. Yeah. So you got augmented reality and the Internet of Things, well, the industrial Internet, whatever you want to call it, edge, intelligent edge-based data yeah. or devices that need to be addressable. Mm -hmm. That's uh, those things are happening very, very fast. What's your take on those two phenomena? I think the 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 part that is, that blows my mind is just the scale involved, right? You talk about billions and billions of people, billions and billions of devices, all interacting with these large clouds, these large data sources, creating data with every move they make. You know, so that's the part that that blows me away. Is just how do you keep up with that many uh, concurrent sessions? How do you keep up with that much data access? How do you keep up? with uh, the, the, the level of scale that's demanded. And I think that's the part that has been, talk about what's been great about the business, what's been great about multi-core, it's been, that's one of those technologies that feel, feeds that ability to scale to these very, very massive, massive footprints. What do you make of the whole hyperscale trend that's going on? I mean, it seems like the enterprise is starting to learn a lot from the hyperscale, but then there's this other meme going on that the hyperscale guys themselves are saying, you know, maybe we're taking this too far. Yeah, <laughs> and I think for the same reasons, probably, which is, how do I manage all of these different devices? I mean, if I always used to say, the, the cheapest server you can make <laughs> is a virtual machine, right? The, a, the fastest one you can deploy is probably a virtual machine as well. So, you know, I think that there's going to, needs to be a, an economic in, uh, conversation on this as well. I think the TCO models for these will probably emerge over the next, you know, yeah. couple of years. Yeah, just uh, share nothing as it gets big, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, Dylan, well, listen, thanks very much for stopping Great. by the Cube. It's really a pleasure Thank seeing you. Thank you, my pleasure. And, uh, Is it Intel Xeon cores, multiple cores, 8, 10, 12, 20, 40. I mean, it's just going <laughs> to keep doubling and doubling and doubling. <laughs> Moore's Law, enabling a lot of great stuff, new technology, and it's exciting for science, data, uh, computer science, social science, engineering, a lot of great stuff, the new era. And we're going to have Kim Stevenson coming on, 430, great. CIO. Give great talk here on the modern uh, enterprise. It's a great view. Love what she's doing over there with Intel. Congratulations. We'll be right back. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.